If you're like me and the majority of the world's population, you probably have one of those. A smartphone. And you probably have had a few of them during the past few years of smartphone evolution. I have a few of them laying around, and with them come those. Lithium-ion batteries, that you will probably not be able to use inside your new phone. I have three of those batteries, and I did not change my phone because the batteries were dead. Sure, they were a little bit weak, but they weren't dead. As long as they don't get hot or start to swell, you can still use them to power devices. The average lithium battery still has 80% of its original capacity left after two years of usage. That's the period in which I usually buy a new smartphone. And think about all the energy that went into extracting the raw materials, producing the battery and shipping it. Considering that, it would be a real shame to just throw them away or let them die. Today is Earth Day, and I want to show you how to build a device that allows you to reuse your old phone batteries as a power bank for newer devices. Let's have a quick look at the things you will need for this project. Of course you are going to need your old phone battery. You are also going to need two PCBs. One of them is a lithium ion battery protection and charging board. The other one is a 5V DC step up converter. I am going to explain to you what the, those to do later on during the video. You are also going to need some wire and something that you can use as battery pins. I use those Arduino pins. You are also going to need a usual paper clamp, just like this one. And some leftover acrylic, plus some screws and super glue to make an enclosure for your project. As far as tools are concerned, you are going to need a pair of pliers, a wire cutter and a knife, as well as a soldering iron, a hot glue gun and a drill. The first step is making the enclosure. I plan on mounting the boards on top of each other, just like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my measurements. Before I started cutting the plexiglass, I made this little plan. You can see that the clamp is going to hold the battery or the charging unit in place. It is going to be fixed with two screws to a 4mm piece of acrylic which is part of the housing for the two PCBs. On the bottom of the housing, we have the two battery pins. If you look at those batteries, you can clearly see that they have different polarity. If I wanted to charge both, I needed to have a battery connector that can change polarity. For this, I used the Arduino pins I mentioned earlier. I took three of the slot pieces and ripped the middle metal part out. I bent the two outer metal parts to the outside so that they would fit both terminals of both batteries. I also took four of the Arduino pins. I'm going to solder the positive wires to the two outer pins and the negative wire to the inner pin. This way I can connect the battery connector two ways. One where plus is on the right and minus is on the left side and one where it's the other way around. Before you start cutting out the pieces of your enclosure, make sure a knife's tip is very sharp. This will make it work a whole lot easier. Use a measuring tool to find the right width. Then use your knife to scratch the surface a few times, about 10 times. Then you can do it without the measuring tool. Make about 20 to 50 cuts and then use your pliers to carefully bend the material on your cut until it breaks. Now you have your pieces. Sand all the pieces so that they fit. Test fit the enclosure and now it's time for the electronics. I changed my mind and wanted to mount the boards the other way around. So I had to use my file and flatten the soldering joints of the USB. Now it was time for soldering. I connected the boards as shown in the schematic. I also added a little switch to be able to turn off the USB charger and a diode to make it impossible to connect batteries with the wrong polarity. In the beginning I told you that I will explain to you how those two boards work. Let's start with the lithium ion protection and charging board. The first thing it does is of course charging. A lithium ion battery has a certain charging pattern. When it's nearly full the current drops. The charger will recognize that and only charge it up to 4.2 volts. On its output the board features an over discharge and over current protection. Most modern phone batteries have one already installed. But this way you can also use unprotected lithium cells like you would find them in old laptop batteries. Now to the DC-DC step-up converter. It takes the DC voltage of the battery and turns it into a square wave. The square wave is sent through a little coil. 
and for induction processes a higher voltage is achieved. This voltage is converted back to DC so you can use it to charge your phone. It basically works like any other normal transformer. I then went on drilling holes into the clamp and the acrylic and used my file and sandpaper to make them align. Here you can see all the finished parts. Now it was time to assemble them and I somehow didn't use my super glue because it didn't work so I used hot glue to do it. After I removed the excess glue, all that was left to do was connecting the clamp, tightening the screws and testing it on my old battery. And it worked! If it doesn't work, plug in the charging cord. After this, it should work. Now you know what to do with your old lithium batteries. My setup offers a maximum charging current of around 1 amp and a maximum output current of around 0.6 amp. It is not much compared to supercharging, but it will charge your phone battery up slowly and protect the old batteries. Also, it has an efficiency of ab uh, around 90%, so you get more than half a charge out of an old battery, which is nice. This whole project cost me around 2-3 to three euros, so it's pretty cheap. There is also a commercial version of this available, it is called Battery. It is pretty fancy and pretty expensive, so for me this was not an option. My enclosure is probably not the coolest, but it definitely shows how the concept works. I guess you can come up with much cooler enclosures and much more good looking ones than I do. There's a written version of this project over on my Instructables page. You can check that out if you want to see everything in detail. There will also be a part 2 of this Earth Day recycling project, where I show you something else that you can do with old batteries. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the next video.